you broke that, that magical boundary of 100 kilometers per hour. I don't know if ever, anyone has ever stuck their hand out while driving with a car that fast. It's, it's pretty fast, I guess. But standing on a board, on a surfing board, how does it feel? Well, first of all, it's a big uh, challenge, obviously, because you're driven by the wind. The wind has the power. And uh, in the 90s, I managed to break the 80 kilometers an hour. And now with 52 and a new hip, I finally made 100 Ks top speed with a top speed of 100.3.68. And over five runs, I did over 100 Ks top speed. But it was not a coincidence. I worked for 10 years or more to get there. You know, so it's, uh, I know, it's not a coincidence. Because of your hip surgery and everything, I think that deserves another applause. That's really fantastic what you did. Thank you. Um, what, what did push you to get there? Or what was, what was it like to even go through all these, um, these backflashes? Well, I've done pretty much anything in windsurfing. I won the wave sailing, I won the freestyle, I won the racing, the slalom, the overall for 12 years in a row in the 90s. And the speed saving was always a, a big challenge. As I said, I did the 80 Ks in the 90s, then I did the 50 knots like 10 years ago. And then I pretty much said, yeah, if I can do 50 knots, I can also do 100 kilometers an hour. And people are saying, yeah, Bjorn, you're a bit crazy. How are you going to do? You're almost 50 <laughs> years old. How are you going to do 100 kilometers on your windsurf board? And uh, with the perfection of the channel and improving the equipment step by step, it finally happened. But is that what's challenging you? When people say, oh, he's crazy, no, why are you doing that? No, that's not what's challenging <laughs> No, me. just a little bit. I knew I could do it with the perfect water and wind angle. Yeah. Especially with the channel, the water has to be completely smooth to be able to go that fast. And uh, with works of uh, working together with the guys who organized the competition or the challenge down in Lüders in Namibia, we have been improving the channel year by year. And uh, I believe it's uh, far from the end. So what is it that drives you to do those challenges? If it's not people who are like, okay, no, he's not doing it, he's not going to get there, what is it? Well, when you compete in wave sailing, it's uh, competing against judges. And the judge is deciding who is the better one. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. When you race against other guys in a race course, it doesn't matter if you go in 25 or 30 knots fast. As long as you're faster around the circuit than the others, you're still the winner. And speed sailing is against the time. Mm -hmm. So the only challenge is yourself, your equipment, and the wind and water conditions. And there's basically no limit to how fast we can windsurf. But we've also seen some crashes. It really looks hard. It's, it looks tough, dangerous. Are you ever afraid? Well, you have to sail yourself into it. When you get to a speed sailing spot, it's good to have a couple of days to get tuned in and then get the stronger wind days later in the, in the month. We got, so I'm down there for one month to do these kind of speeds. And you got to work up to it. It's not like you just jump on a board and go 100 Ks. Yeah. So, yeah, step by step. And what you don't want to do is uh, have a wipeout in the channel because it really hurts. And it can also be your last run if you really have a bad one because uh, people have gone down and crashed and just stayed out of the water for the rest of the, the challenge or flew home. So don't crash. Not a good idea. <laughs> I think nobody wants that. But I imagine if you stand on that board, you think about things like that, don't you? Not once you're standing on there. You think about the probabilities of actually crashing before, and then you kind of think, is it, uh, every time you start, is it a good angle of wind? Is the water nice when you see it around the corner? And then you decide, I'm going to go 100% or only 85%, and then make it to the other side. And sometimes the wind shift is during the run, you have to slow down because it just gets too choppy. And if you keep on going 100%, you won't make it to the end. Whenever you broke that record now, the 100K, whenever you hit that, did you know immediately now, yes, I did it? No, basically I did not know it straight away. Actually, the first time I saw it was a malfunction of my GPSs because I did 55 point something knots, which is 103 Ks plus. And then I did a, a couple of hundred twos and then another 103 after that. And that's when I decided, yeah, it's actually happened. But after the first one, I didn't want to believe it yet. <laughs> I can imagine that.